When we're doing algebra with numbers, we use rules like a plus b equals b plus a to allow us to solve equations or simplify equations or otherwise answer questions about algebraic formulae. The reason that we're allowed to use these rules is because whatever number a is and whatever number b is, the result on the left will equal the result on the right. And that's analogous to logical equivalence of propositional formulae. If I wrote this formula, p or q, is equivalent to this other formula, q or p, then the way we've defined logical equivalence is that whatever value p is and whatever value q is, the result on the left will always equal the result on the right. That's the same as the definition of this rule. Whatever number a is and whatever number b is, the left equals the right. But these rules in algebra aren't useful just because we can ins insert numbers for a and b. So whatever number I choose to substitute a for and whatever number I substitute b for, these will be equal. But it's also the case that these are equal whatever formulae I substitute. If I substituted a as x squared, for example, x squared isn't really a number, it's a formula that produces a number. But as long as I consistently substitute a as x squared, and let's say b as y squared, then these results will also always be equal, whatever x is and whatever y is, for the same reason that these two are always equal, whatever a is and whatever b is. And I can apply a similar rule in propositional logic. I don't just have to substitute trues and falses for p and q. I could also substitute other formulae. So let's say I have a question such as, is p implies q or q and r logically equivalent to q and r or p implies q. I could solve this problem with a truth table. Because there are only finitely many values that p, q and r can take, I could draw a truth table with eight rows and that would cover all of the possibilities. But there's a simpler way of answering this question, which is to say that p or q is equivalent to q or p. So whatever formulae I substitute, as long as I substitute them consistently, what I get as the output will be another equivalence. So if I substitute p for p implies q, as long as I do that consistently, and I substitute q for q and r, and as long as I'm consistent, then because this is an application of this rule here, p or q is equivalent to q or p, I know automatically that these are logically equivalent without drawing a truth table because it's an application of this more general rule that the order of the inputs to an OR operation don't matter. 